All right, y'all, welcome to the Scott Horton Show. I'm the director of the Libertarian Institute, editorial director of Antiwar.com, author of the book Fool's Errand, Time to End the War in Afghanistan, and the brand new Enough Already, Time to End the War on Terrorism. And I've recorded more than 5,500 interviews since 2003, almost all on foreign policy and all available for you at scotthorton.org. You can sign up for the podcast feed there. And the full interview archive is also available at youtube.com slash Scott Horton Show. Hey, you guys on the line, I've got the great Phil Weiss, just like once upon a time. That kind of rhymes. Uh, of course, he runs mondoweiss.net. Welcome back to the show. How you doing, Phil? Great, Scott. How you doing? I'm doing great. You know, um, I'm so sorry that we haven't talked in so long. Sometimes my stomach gets full of this Israel-Palestine stuff, and I just can't take it no more. (laughs) And then plus, you know, I like to interview Ramsey Baru just because he's so brilliant and eloquent, and from there, and, you know. No, it's great. There's a lot of people you should be talking to, and also we all get a belly full of this because it's just unending woe, you know, And, and it's like... You know, you see these videos day after day of people getting getting their arms broken and kids getting killed, and it's just really demoralizing, dispiriting. It is completely crazy. All right, we're going to get to the arm breaking here in a second. But first, can we talk about Shireen Abu Akla? Is that how you say it? Yeah, that, that's, yeah. Okay. I, I don't speak Arabic, but that that is... That's how I've learned to pronounce it. Uh-huh. Shireen Abu Akhla. And So Alice she was Nina an American Maric. citizen, right? Was she born yeah. here, do you know? Either way. I don't, I'm not sure. I don't know. But she was an American know. citizen. And, yes. And she was shot in the head and killed by the Israeli Defense Forces back uh, what, yes. a couple months ago? May 11th. On uh, May 11th. Okay. Uh, can yeah. you go through and tell us that story? I know they always sure. end up admitting that they were the ones who did it, but they always lie at first. Yes. They lied at first. I mean, she was killed at like six in the morning uh, as a group of journalists outside Janine refugee camp in occupied territories signaled to the Israeli forces 600 feet away down a road in clear eyes you know, uh, sight line of them that they were, you know, walking over to the entrance of the camp to see what was going on. And she was wearing a press vest as were other journalists and a helmet. And, um, yet, uh, these Israeli soldiers fired at her very tight groups of shots. So hard to argue that it wasn't targeted. And, um, uh, one journalist was struck in the back, her producer, uh, I'm forgetting his name, I think Ali Amudi, and uh, from Al Jazeera. She worked for Al Jazeera, a very popular broadcast journalist uh, was Shireen. She was 52. She was struck in the head and um, fell over, and, and uh, people tried to uh, carry her out of the, uh, the, 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 you know, the line of sight, but, um, and then brought her to a hospital, but she was dead. And so from the beginning, Israel said, oh, she was killed by Palestinian militants. One line of bullshit BS after another. And um, finally, around a week ago, under pressure from the United States government, the Israeli government finally allowed that it was likely that one of her, their own soldiers had killed her. Something that had been clear to eyewitnesses that day, something that leading media organizations, including CNN, the Washington Post, and the New York Times, on uh, uncharacteristically, all had said was the case that an Israeli soldier killed her. To, judging it from uh, doing forensic sonic analysis of ballistic, you know, record whatever the recordings of the the shots, mm-hmm. and um, so the United States government actually put pressure on Israel in this case because there was so much pressure of a political character from. Uh, progressives in the Congress, uh, maybe a couple of Republicans too, uh, but also from these media organizations that here was another case, something like the Jamal Khashoggi case, in which journalists, you know, stand up for a leading journalist who's been uh, killed in this wanton fashion. And so um, uh, the United States, uh, under pressure, uh, repeatedly said, well, we are... uh, 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 getting information from our Israeli partners. That's the language that they used over and over again. And uh, we trust them. And um, initially they said we can't conclude anything. And finally, the under further pressure, as I said, around 10 days ago, the Israeli government admitted that it had shot her. And 
the U.S. government is saying it's a tragedy, a horrible tragedy, and accepting the Israeli claim that it soldier uh, did not intend to do this, and uh, we're not going to give out that soldier's name, and there will be no consequences for that soldier. Mm. Yeah, they said something about a firefight, but there's no firefight. No, they said firefight. I mean, obviously, I mean, not obviously, I mean, your, your listeners might, but there are militants, uh, you know, uh, in Janine refugee camp. It's one of the places where Palestinian uh, militant resistance to occupation has been extremely strong. So they had this uh, reason for them to be there, these soldiers, they, you know, they, they say, you know, to sort of quash, um, quote unquote terrorism. But quashing terrorism has meant uh since uh February or so that a hundred Palestinians in the West Bank have been killed. Uh Israel is is clamping down on all resistance in the occupied territories because in, in part because um the new prime minister, Yair Lapid who has no sort of military background to speak of and is considered, uh, you know, kind of a, um, a softy potentially by the Israeli public, has to show that he um, can uh, be brutal towards Palestinians. He's right. up for re-election in November. Yeah, of course. That George H.W. Bush, don't call me a wimp syndrome, right? Got to get out there and crack some skulls. Great point. Great yeah. point. Yes. Even yes. though... He was in World War II. It seems like he could have just said, hey, I was in World War II, and they would have shut up. But no, he had to invade Panama and Iraq. But anyway, wow. Wow. I digress. Good yeah, um, Good digression. <laughs> I forgot that You one. know what? Somebody asked me recently, is it really true that H.W. Bush got crossed with the Israel lobby and that had anything to do with him losing the election in 1992? And you know what I said? I said, you can read it at MondoWeiss.net. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 That's a hell of a story. And I think I told you before, I was only in, I guess, ninth grade, 10th grade, ninth mm -hmm. grade. Um, but I was paying close attention to this whole uh, wow. you know, end of the Republican era thing that I was watching here. Not that I liked Bill Clinton, but I wanted to see no. the Republicans going and all that. But man, I don't remember Israel being a controversy during that. And the Democrat no. outflanking the Republican on the right and the Christian right, right turning against H.W. Bush. I was, nobody said that. Not where I could hear it. I mean, maybe on specialized proto blogs at the time or something, but ha ha ha! Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. That was never covered, and um, as you as you point out, Bill Clinton ran to the he supported settlements in that run, and that's one of the reasons he was able to defeat George H. W. Bush. And uh, even Tom Friedman has admitted this and or said this in recent years that uh, George W. Bush, who obviously came in in 2000. Uh, George H. W. Bush's son, he he vowed after seeing what had happened to his father, I am never going to get out Israel, and uh, and the result was, of course, that he had all those neocon neocons in his administration, and we got the Iraq War. Yep, and as we talk about in enough already, and of course, uh, Mearsheimer and Walt do yeah. the best job in their book, The Israel Lobby where they show how, you know, Colin Powell, after September 11th, told W. Bush, we got to do a two-state solution right now. You got all the political capital in the world because of the greatest failure in American history, right? So now's our chance to do this and that they were working on it. In fact, if you read Ramondo columns from early 2002, it's like the Powell neocon showdown, Ariel Sharon versus the secretary wow. of state, I who's going to win. And then by summer, yep, Ariel Sharon won and Colin Powell screwed. And that's the end of that. Wow, that's fantastic. And I forget, that's in enough already, too? You have it yes, in there? Yes, sir, absolutely. Because I quote from um, Karen DeYoung, the Washington Post yeah. reporter, who did the very official biography, biography of Colin yeah. Powell, talks about how he worked so hard on this. And then also yeah. I have um, uh, Hemi Shalev, who yeah. talked about how Ariel Sharon's men couldn't help but brag about it and how they wow. had beaten Powell. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking at that. But I'm looking at both books on my shelf right now. I'm going to check that out. See, I mean, there's there's so many great details in this history that you know I sometimes forget or don't, haven't seen, and that are just crucial and show how the United States has folded again and again. And you know, in the case of Shireen Abu Akleh, the United States is putting no pressure on the Israeli government whatsoever. Is in the settlement pro the settlement project and enterprise is just going forward stronger than ever right now. This sort of centrist government that includes left-wing Israeli parties, left-wing Zionist merits and labor, 
they are approving more settlements than Netanyahu did and uh, the predecessor and in areas of Jerusalem that are, you know, killing the two-state solution. Obviously, there's never going to be a two-state solution. It got killed a long time ago, but they are, excuse me, nailing the, the you know, the last nails into the um, coffin. And I'm not talking about QE to Queen Elizabeth here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, listen, in fact, did you see the thing? I bet you probably covered this, where she was... Um, good on this to some degree and had refused to visit Israel her entire yeah. reign yeah. because yeah. of their oppression of the Palestinians. That was what they wow. said. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I saw that. I, yeah. I mean, I, Based I queen of England, that person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. And, and I know Charles has also shown a similar reluctance, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, now, I want to go back to something that you were saying about the race of the dead reporter here. Um, yeah. it, it, her nationality, not as an American, but as a journalist. And so where the Post and CNN and the New York Times, they wouldn't give a damn at all if she was Furkan Dogan, who was yeah. murdered by the Israelis during yeah. the Mavi Mamara, yeah. right? Or if she was Rachel Corey right. yeah. trying to protect a family in a house uh, from a bulldozer. Yeah. But in yeah. this case, it was yeah. part of their fraternity, even though I'm surprised they respected her as one of them at all. But good. I'm glad that they did. And so yeah. they went so far as to prove and they all show the exact same thing yeah. from their own separate investigations, the Post, the Times and CNN, uh, as yeah. you mentioned there about what really happened to her. And the closest Palestinians firing weapons were far away and not adjacent and that was, you know, one of the things originally claimed by the Israelis was, oh, we were shooting at these guys over here, even though, or, or it was these Palestinians here who shot her, but they were not in anywhere the line of sight of her. And this yeah, kind of thing. So yeah. it was all, their lies were debunked and the truth was established from the very beginning, which means that they've been lying this whole time. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, one thing about this that's remarkable is that you look at all the resources that I mean, these incredible investigations where, you know, sonics experts were hired to um, study the, uh, you know, the separation between the rifle, I mean, I'm sorry, the barrel sound and the actual bullet going, you know, these these uh, milliseconds in order to determine how far the shot was. And, uh, you know, all these, what I'm getting at is all these resources were devoted, uh, spent by journalistic organizations for something that was obvious from the start. And I'm glad that they did that, but it just shows how much wasted effort there is in this whole Israel-Palestine conflict, because this the impunity of the Israelis. And they, you know, as you say, they lied from the start and they get away with it. And they, but the United States had busted them on the lie from the start. B'Tselem, the human rights organization in Israel, busted them from the start on the point you just made. There was no firefight anywhere near there. B'Tselem said, we had a researcher in that area. Here's the Palestinian, there was Palestinian fire, militant fire, but it was way over here, you know, half a mile away or something. And they put that out that very day. And so you had these kind of official lies that have been circulating for four months and have had a lot of power. And it just is, that is a reflection. I mean, we talk about how we got hoodwinked into the Iraq uh, war invasion. I mean, obviously, a lot of Americans participated in that hoodwinking. But some of that was, you know, official, it was propaganda and lies. And here again, you see it on a small scale, that for four months, Israel can, you know, lead the United States around by the nose on this these lies. And it's it's really i mean it's it's pretty horrifying and and the actual conditions for palestinians are just terrifying and as you say the ordinary people who get killed by the idf it's not like there are any investigations around that but a lot of those killings are just equally horrendous and often include 16 and 17 year old boys um and lately uh, it included this settler attack on uh Hafez Hurani where they broke both his arms uh with sticks and some of that's on video but and the Israeli soldiers do nothing so there is apartheid in the West Bank that's what we're talking about here there's apartheid there's a regime of apartheid where Jews are first class citizens and Palestinians have no rights at all yeah It really is like um, a Jim Crow type parallel. Like if you took Mississippi Uh 
in the 40s. And they said, oh, no, one day there's going to be a separate black state in North Mississippi. And so we don't have to end segregation. We don't have to give them civil rights or any decent respect whatsoever, because one day we're working on it sooner or later Then uh, they'll have independence. And then that'll be their own kind of thing. But then never doing it, never wow. giving them independence and just keeping wow. I've Jim Crow that anyway. That's a great analogy. I, I Yeah, I mean. That's amazing because that's the same thing that Israel is doing now is claiming we're for a two-state solution. And the United States goes along with it. You know, we have politicians saying, well, there's going to be a two-state solution, you know. And, and on that basis, you can deny yet another generation of Palestinians any rights to dream, any, you know, uh, freedom to travel, movement. It's, 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 ter it's awful. And it's only, you know, the American government is, is licensing it. Yeah. Hey, you guys, on October the 15th, I'm doing a Defend the Guard rally in Somerset, New Jersey. Find out all about it at defendtheguard.us. At the Libertarian Institute, we publish books, real good ones. So far, we've got Will Griggs' No Quarter, Sheldon Richmond's Coming to Palestine, and What Social Animals Owe to Each Other, and four of mine, Fool's Aaron, Enough Already, The Great Ron Paul, and my brand new one, Hotter than the sun. Time to abolish nuclear weapons. And I'm happy to announce that we've just published our managing editor Keith Knight's first one, The Voluntarist Handbook, an excellent collection of essays by the world's greatest libertarian thinkers and writers, including me. Check them all out at libertarianinstitute.org books. And for a limited time, signed copies of Enough Already and Hotter Than the Sun are available at scotthorton.org books. Hey, guys. I had some wasps in my house, so I shot them to death with my trusty Bug Assault 3.0 model with the improved salt reservoir and bar safety. I don't have a deal with them, but the show does earn a kickback every time you get a Bug Assault or anything else you buy from Amazon.com by way of the link in the right-hand margin on the front page at scotthorton.org. So keep that in mind. And don't worry about the mess. Your wife will clean it up. And, you know, I just come across this all the time, too. I'm sure that you do, too. Um, but people just really don't know. They really do sort of kind of, it's confusing, but they think that Palestine is the country next door. And when you tell them, no, 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 they were already completely licked, whooped, beaten, occupied for the last, you know, X many decades, if you want to go back to 47 or to 67, right, that... um you know, before 67, the West Bank was dominated by Jordan. It's not like they had independence then, but they've been dominated by the Israelis ever since then. So it's not like Ben Shapiro says that, oh, when they're firing rockets across the Rio Grande from Mexico and implying it's the Mexican government doing it in his analogy. No, no, no. This is like the Navajo on the reservation out in Arizona, completely surrounded by the Anglos who now built this wall and bomb them constantly and all these things and support the rise of Hamas among them to divide yeah. and conquer them, etc. And how, you know, Scott, I always go to this question when I'm talking to you, but I mean, how obviously, you know, this was important enough to you how important is it to other Americans? I mean, I'm, you know, I'm in it because I'm Jewish, and that's how I got and you know, was protesting the Iraq War. But, you know, it, it's, it's my problem because, you know, my people are, you know, the leading, um, the leaders of this Zionist project. So it's in my name. And so, but how, how much do you think Americans care about this who are not Jewish, not well, Palestinian? You know, I don't know. I mean, I think, honestly... Like what we were just talking about, if you, when you just tell them, look, man, I know obviously just by default we're all supposed to be on Israel's side, but here's the other side of the story for a second. I think people generally, my experience is they're pretty shocked by it, yeah. and they think uh -huh. we should not be a part of that. That's not right. Yeah. We all yeah. more or less as a society regret what happened to the Indians. What do you mean we exterminated every last one of them, you know, yeah. or took every bit of their land in, in the way, yeah. and all of that is regretful, but somehow we're supporting this all happening in real time right now in front of us. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and especially, you know, in the whole post-World War II era. Yes. America outlawed countries invading each other and taking land from each other. Mm -hmm. But then this is the one big exception is our friends, the Israelis get to do whatever they want and steal whatever they want and just yeah. land, rustle, whatever they want and, and call it 
the Bible says we can, which is completely mm -hmm. preposterous, right? Which we count in no other circumstance. And then also, you know, I don't know. I think when I explain to people how this is why Mohammed Atta crashed uh, his uh, yeah. hijacked airliner into yeah. the South Tower there, yeah. or was it the North Tower, I guess he hit, um, they go, oh, well, mm -hmm. I thought they hit us for a freedom or something, or that's what I was told. Yeah. I yeah. thought I thought just Dick Cheney hired a hologram to do it or something, but oh, I get it. It really? was and it wasn't the Israelis did the attack. It was the Israelis motivated the attack with yeah. their absolute merciless brutality against the people of Palestine and of Lebanon. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. why it's a mm -hmm. fact. Mm -hmm. That's in the book too. Both mm -hmm. of them. Yeah, that I'm aware of. Yeah, and you know what I think is a, is great about your comments today is that. You know, the American people have taken up uh, moral arms against Jim Crow. They took up moral arms against South African apartheid. Public opinion shifted on, the, on South Africa, and public opinion, you know, just mounted and mounted against the Jim Crow South. And I think that process, I think we are in that process now in the Israel Palestine. Uh, uh, under uh, uh, sort of awareness, the consciousness of it, and that's what terrifies APAC, the Israel lobby, and its um, proxy uh, Democratic Majority for Israel, and even terrifies J Street, the liberal Zionist lobby. They know that progressives are turning against this whole thing, and that Americans are going to follow. Yeah, there, uh, there's going to be, and broadly, American sentiment is changing. In answer to my own question to you. Uh, I mean, I, I, it wasn't a fake question. I, I always wonder, but I think that is American sentiment really is changing among young progressives, Democrats, women, you know, people of color. All these sort of segments of traditional sort of pro, or you know somewhat progressive opinion or Democrat, you know, that's changing. And I think a lot of uh, uh, Americans who are independents and Republicans are going to go along with that. Yeah, I think that's changed too. I think. There was sort of a narrative anyway. This was never really the case. But there was a story that everyone on the right supports Israel unless they're so far to the right that they really don't like Jews. Something like that. But that's really just not true. And there's yeah. all kinds of, you know, Regna Republishing uh, famously originally yes, had beautiful. published, you know, four or five books against uh, Israel back then. I that was the that. conservative consensus that. first. And it was, was Harry Truman's yeah. project after all, you know? Um, yeah. And... Um, and of course, you know, just look at at their role and line us into Iraq War II. The American right absolutely regrets going along with George W. Bush on that. But if they were really? going along with George W. Bush on that, they were going along with Paul Wolfowitz and Scooter yeah. Libby and Richard Pearl, a.k.a. Mm -hmm. and, and Douglas Fife and David Wormser. These were Benjamin Netanyahu, more even than Sharon. But these were yeah. the coup agents in yeah. America acting on behalf of a foreign power. And yeah, I got a grudge about that. And I think a lot of people do that. This is the worst thing, man. They started the entire, not just century, but millennium off on the wrong foot with this horrible, stupid thing that was absolutely against America's interests. Absolutely. And it was for the interests of this tiny little country. None of us have ever been to and don't even know or care anything about. Right. And, and, you know, when you, a couple of things you brought up, Regnery, you know, did great uh, books back in the 50s on the Palestinian refugees and how, you know, unjust that was. You, you had 750,000 people displaced and who should have been able to go back to their homes. And the Republican Party was strong on that issue. And even Nixon was for bringing the, uh, the refugees back. And I think Johnson, too, uh, and certainly Eisenhower. And, of course, it never happened. But, you know, these it has been a pattern for now you know, 75 years, and hopefully it's changing. Mm. And I think it's, I think one big thing that's going to change is that when you, the American Jewish community, if it shifts, that's what gives people permission to say it's anti-Semitic to criticize Israel. you got this strong American Jewish community post-Holocaust saying, with a lot of influence in the United States, saying you can't criticize Israel. And when that community starts criticizing Israel, and I'm just one of many in that community that start, you know, it starts giving p other people permission. That's true, and I do use that as a talking point too. And look, look at how many American Jews side with the Palestinians. I mean, yeah. why would they do that? You don't hear yeah. the Irish siding with England. 
Uh, what are they doing? Why would they yeah. do that? They do yeah. it because what Israel's doing is wrong. Yeah. And they care yeah. about it. It's as simple as that. There's no yeah. other motive. There's no such thing as a self-hating Jew. What a ridiculous yeah, yeah, yeah. thing for one person to say yeah. about another person. Give me a break. What a yeah. hollow excuse that is. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Can't break, yeah. As, you know? as Max Blumenthal says, I have a lot better reasons to hate myself than the fact that I'm Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Now, tell me about Senator Patrick Leahy's best day of his life here. Oh, wow. You liked it. Yeah. Leahy, who's uh, leaving office, of course, uh, 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 gave a speech last week saying, hey, there's been no ac accountability whatsoever in the Shireen Abu Akhla uh, killing. And um, there's no proof that this wasn't intentional. How can you say this was not intentional? Uh, you know, these bullets were uh, close to one another. How can you say it's a horrific tragedy? He blew up everything about the U.S. line on this. There's no proof this isn't intentional. We haven't heard from the soldier. He gave a speech on the Senate floor saying that the Leahy bill should come into effect if it's shown that this was intentional. And there has to be an investigation. The Leahy bill bars uh, U.S. military aid to gross viola violators of human rights, and Israel is certainly a gross violator of human rights. Uh, you know, uh, uh, with an apartheid system inside the West Bank that is militarily enforced. And Shireen Abu Akhla's death was one part of that, and Leahy, God bless him, is saying, hey, the Leahy law should kick in here. So, that was last week, and it was a great speech. And um, yeah, and I think. Wait, tell uh, us about Chris, the Leahy law real quick, would you? I'm, you know, I'm, I don't know it in any. I just understand that it it bars U.S. military aid going to um, violators of human rights with impunity, right. and that's the question here. Is there's a, there's impunity here? You know, they, there's no consequences in, inside Israel for killing this leading journalist. You know, uh, so. That, you know, even in Saudi Arabia, there were consequences for the murder of uh, Jamal Khashoggi, you know, even if they stopped somewhere. And that's, uh, I, I think that's helped. I think Sharina Abu Akhla's death has had a major effect on American awareness of how sort of uh, brutal Israel is and yeah. oppressive. So and that's the arrogance here. Why can't they just say they're sorry? Doesn't it matter right. to them whether Americans resent them or not? No, and they can't. I did a piece last week on these intellectuals in Israel. They're saying we're not sorry for this. We need to go down uh, to. We need our boys need to attack these terrorists because if we don't, the terrorists will be in Tel Aviv. And so there's this hysterical security uh, argument. Yeah, but and they're talking about shooting a journalist, a female right. journalist, civilian that's in the right. face and killing that's her. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's mm -hmm. what they're doing. They are justifying that, and the Israeli government is justifying it. That's how far gone that society is, because they have been cosseted and gotten away with everything from by the United States. That's what impunity does. That's what entitlement does. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, 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 that's why we're hated, because we're helping to bring about the end of that, you and me and a lot of other people of conscience. All right. Now people can read that piece at Mondo Weiss. Dot net Israelis justify killing of Shireen oh, wow, Abu yeah. Akhla yeah. and Biden aides echo the talking points. And, uh, of course, uh, there's uh, the Leahy piece, too, is Israel's Thanks. denial of accountability for Abu Akhla killing may require cutoff of aid. And I'm sorry, I know we're both out of time here, but I love cool. talking with you. It's great to great catch back you, up Scott. with Have a good one, man. I appreciate it. It's always great to talk to you. Absolutely. You too, sir. Have a good one. Okay. Bye. Bye. The Scott Horton Show and Anti-War Radio can be heard on KPFK 90.7 FM in LA, APSradio.com, Antiwar.com, ScottHorton.org, and LibertarianInstitute.org.